making headlines first at nine, disrupting peace and order, motorcyclist disregarding police order gunned down in Kataragama. IGP sends a team of CID officers to probe incident. Paving the way for probes, President directs investigations into alleged punishment of principal. Uwe Chief Minister steps down as Provincial Education Minister. Ready to exercise the franchise? Postal voting for the upcoming local government election commences tomorrow. Over 500,000 eligible to vote. Refuting the bond report, former Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayaka says he will make statement as Bond Commission report is manipulated. Bouncing back to victory, Sri Lanka beats Zimbabwe by five wickets in Dhaka after two consecutive defeats in the Tri-Nation series. With the latest from across Sri Lanka and around the world, I'm in Diva Yamwatha on First at Nine, other than on a 24-7. We start off with your developing story tonight. Police officials attached to the Kataragama police station gunned down a motorcyclist who refused an order to stop for an inspection last night. The incident sparked violent protests in the area, while the policeman connected to the shooting was arrested and remanded until the 30th of this month following a court order. Meanwhile, IGP Pujit Jayasundara deployed a special team to probe the incident and it is now under the purview of the Criminal Investigations Department. Police Special Task Force personnel have beefed up security in and around the area of the Katragama police station. At around 10.55 p.m. last night, police had ordered a motorcyclist to stop for an inspection in Kataragama. However, the motorcyclist refusing to oblige, a policeman had fired at him. Although the motorcyclist sustained critical injuries in the shooting, the pillion rider escaped with minor injuries. The motorcyclist had succumbed to his injuries while being taken to the Kataragama hospital. Meanwhile, the pillion rider who escaped unhurt accuses that the police carried out the shooting after his friend stopped his motorbike, paying heed to the order. <laughs> He further stated that a policeman and civil security officer related to the incident attacked him when he attempted to help his friend, who was critically injured, to hospital. Meanwhile, as soon as the shooting had taken place, police have taken the motorbike to the Kataragama police station. However, half an hour later, the bike had been brought back to the location where the incident took place. An eyewitness had this to say. There were two people on the bike and the passenger had his helmet in his hand. I saw them being ordered to stop. Police fired two shots at the bike and the motorist started bleeding heavily. Then the police beat the passenger. Then the police officer brought the OIC and the OIC said to take the patient to hospital. Following the incident, an angry mob attacked the Kataragama police station. <laughs> However, the situation was later brought under control by the police special task force. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Our reporter witnessed security being beefed up at the Kataragama police station with the deployment of the police special task force. However, a large group of people gathered to protest outside the police station. Police used tear gas against the violent protesters. Protesters have been arrested so far, including 15 women. Meanwhile, the Criminal Investigation Department has launched a special investigation into the matter and a team of CID officials have been sent to Kataragama as per the orders of IGP Pooji Jai Sundara. Taking to Twitter, Minister of Law and Order Sagla Ratnayaka urged the public to remain calm and maintain peace as investigations are ongoing. Also on our top story tonight, President Maitripala Sirisena instructed Inspector General of Police Pujit Jaisundra to launch an investigation into the incident where Chief Minister of the Ua Province, Chamara Sampat Dasanayaka, allegedly ordered the principal of Tamil Girls Mahavidyalam in Badulla to kneel down before him. The President's media division said in a communique that the President ordered the Uwe Province Education Ministry to be placed under the purview of the Governor of the Province, MP Jai Singha, with immediate effect. The principal who was subjected to the alleged punishment by Chief Minister of the Uwe Provincial Council, Chamara Sampad Dasanayaka, was requested to appear before the Badula Police this morning. Thereafter, police attempted to escort her to the Chief Minister's official residence. However, group including UMP MP Vadivel Suresh protested against the move. Another protest was later held when the principal in question was taken to the Provincial General Hospital from the Chief Minister's residence. <laughs> Meanwhile, issuing a communique today, President's media office stated that President Maitri Pala Sirisena ordered the Inspector General of Police Pooja Jai Sundara to carry out impartial investigations into the matter and to take immediate legal action as recommended by the probe. President Maitri Pala Sirisen has also directed that the Uva Province Education Ministry be vested under the purview of the Governor of Uva Province, MP Jai Singha. Meanwhile, speaking to media today, Chief Minister of the Uva Province stated that he will step down as the Uva Province Minister of Education pending investigations. I request that an impartial and independent inquiry be held into the matter. I have informed the Governor that I will be stepping down from my position as the Uva Province Minister of Education in order to assist investigations. I was told that Vadivar Suresh visited the teacher at the school and gave her the opportunity to speak with the Prime Minister over the phone. I believe it is the Prime Minister who influenced her to change her statement.
Postal voting for the local government elections will commence tomorrow at election offices, district secretaries and police stations. According to the Election Commission, public sector employees who have applied for postal voting can cast their votes tomorrow. In addition, postal voting for employees at other government institutions, including educational offices, Sri Lanka Transport Board offices and police and security force personnel participating in election-related duties will be held on Wednesday and Thursday. The Election Commission says it has accepted around 560,000 applications for postal voting at the local government polls. With postal voting to commence tomorrow, President Maithipala Sirisena says he will take the responsibility of implementing the law against those who have committed fraudulent acts. President Sirisena made this remark today, addressing an election rally held in Kanthale. Yeah. The United People's Freedom Alliance, led by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, organized another rally in Kanthale today, in line with the upcoming local government election. Some ask me as to what I have done by joining the United National Party. In the past three years, I was someone who had to fight battles with the international community after we received independence. If you cast your vote in support of any other party apart from the SLFP and UPFA, then that individual has pledged support to corruption, fraud, loss of democracy and independence. We all speak about the bond issue. I have appointed two presidential commissions. I received both reports. These reports, which have been compiled without any political bias, have named several politicians and individuals involved in fraudulent acts. I wish to say that I will take every possible action to ensure that punishment be meted against these individuals. I have taken responsibility to ensure that those who are named as respondents in these reports will not receive an opportunity to work in the future. They will be tried before courts and will be punished for their crimes. Meanwhile, two Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna candidates from the Trincomali district pledged their support to President Maitri Pala Sirisena today. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe claims that the previous government only managed to create more problems, including a debt stock, although they promised to solve the country's problems. The Premier made this comment participating in a rally organised by the United National Party in Nikavarite today. The United National Party held a rally in Nikavarite today ahead of the local government election. Politicians of the party from the Kurunagala district participated in the rally. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe presided over the rally. When we lost in 1993, he was criticised. They accused him for murders in Batalanda. As opposition leader, Ranil Vikramasinghe said he will go to Halstoff Court. He was continually questioned by many attorneys. He answered them, but eventually the case was put aside. They tried to attack him and to defame his image. Mahindra Rajapaksha also attempted the same, but he failed. We only had one part of the national government. Even the post of the president went to another party. By the end of next year, we have to begin the battle to appoint Ranu Vikram Singh to the top post. After winning the 30-year war, former President Mahindra Rajapaksha said he would develop the country and solve the unemployment issue. No problem was solved. Instead, he enlarged existing problems. The debt he created was so huge that the country's revenue wasn't sufficient to pay that. After we took over the government, Mahindra Rajapaksha thought we wouldn't be able to manage it that the country's economy will collapse within the first year and the government will be overthrown so that he can rebuild a government. It's been three years now. We have to manage the government as well as the economy. I did not forget the northwestern province. The northwestern province has two industrial zones and a tourist zone. Under the Northwestern Development Ministry, we will begin the plan to develop one Nihat Patu. We can do this on a national level. But who will implement these at village level? This is why we need the provincial councils to work with us, or else that money will be wasted. Grant UNP the sole power to develop the village. The main campaign rally of the Sri Lanka Podujana Piramuna was held in Kuliapite today. Addressing his supporters, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa said that the government hoodwinked the people by promising development that they themselves were incapable of attaining. 
Another campaign rally organized by the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna ahead of the upcoming local government election was held in Kuliyapitiya today. Three years later, President says that it was the PM who looked into the economic development of the country and that he will now start focusing on it. Together they destroyed the economy of this country. The individual has been gunned down by the police in Kataragama. It has come to a situation where people are carrying out protests against the police. The relevant minister must accept responsibility of all this. And then the chief minister of the Uwa province makes the principal of a Tamil school to kneel down before him. Where is the justice? Wouldn't the president sway his sword against the chief minister? Former President Mahindu Rajapaksa was warmly welcomed by the supporters upon his arrival. <laughs> I am reminded of Volkswagen each time I remember Kuliapitiya. Some say the Volkswagen company is in ruins now. It seems that Volkswagen is not going to come. The expressway that was supposed to be established in Kurunagala during our time is still not there. If I were in power, it would have been vested with the public already. He is saying that he'd leave the post when all those who are corrupt and the fraudsters are brought before justice. I think he's forgotten that a presidential election will be held next year. He'd have to leave then. Leader of the JVP, Anura Kumara Disanayaka, opines that there are individuals in the present government who protect those accused of corruption and fraud. Speaking at a rally in Gaul yesterday, the JVP leader vowed to reveal such individuals if necessary. The JVP organized a rally in Gaul yesterday in line with the local government election. The rally-themed Energy Against Corruption saw the participation of JVP politicians representing the Gaul district. It's been three years, but did they catch thieves? Instead, they protected them. Sagala Ratnayaka, Vajira Abevardhana, Tilak Marapuna and Ranil Vikramasinghe protected the thieves of the previous government. If Sagala, Ranil Vikramasinghe, Vajira and Tilak refuse it, we will reveal the way they protected the thieves. I saw posters asking votes to appoint Mahinda as the Prime Minister. Is it true? Can Mahinda be appointed as the Premier through this election? It's a lie. But why do they lie? Meanwhile, JVP parliamentarian Sunil Handunetti also addressed a gathering in Akuresa yesterday. We demand from President Maitripa Sirisena to release the report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry to investigate and inquire into serious acts of fraud, corruption, abuse of power, state resources and privileges of the 34 individuals without hiding it. That report shows the reality of Mahinda Yapa, Vimal Veeravansa, Mahinda Ananda, P.B. Jasundara, Prema Siri, Chandrapala and Basil Rajapaksha. We can name you the list. Why is the President not releasing the report? We challenge him to do so. Then it will be clear as to who looted the central bank and other entities. Both the parties are thieves, so do not get deceived. <laughs> Former Minister Ravi Karunanayake says he will deliver a special statement pertaining to the report produced by the Commission of Inquiry which probed central bank bond issuances. Speaking to reporters following an event in Colombo yesterday, the former finance minister claimed that the report contents have been distorted and manipulated. They gave us a collapsed economy. S.B. Disanayake, Susu Prema Janta, Dayasiri Jayasekara, Mahinda Amaravira, John Siniviratna were in Mahinda Rajapaksha's government. What are they talking about today? All of them are defaming everyone in the government which served the country. Dayasiri Jayasekara, who was with Mahinda Rajapaksha, is talking as if he is reborn. And if you look at Mahindananda Aludgamage, whose wife has bribery and corruption allegations against her, is now trying to portray a good character. These are not qualities of good governance. They have distorted and manipulated the report by the Commission of Inquiry. I will make a statement on the 23rd of January to talk about this crime. <laughs> Watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Than 24 7. Chairperson of the Export Development Board, Indira Malvata, says that the government aims to achieve a target of 13 billion US dollars in export revenue during this year. She made this remark at the launch of the Lanka Rubber Global Consortium held in Colombo recently. 
The Lanka Rubber Global Consortium was launched under the auspices of the chairperson of Export Development Board Indira Malwatha recently. The objective of the consortium, which consists of five rubber sector companies, aims to boost industry exports under a multi-stakeholder initiative. The national target for our country is that we should reach over 20 billion US dollars by 2020. And in fact, uh, we have looked at some of the targets and looking at it, I think most of the sectors are very confident that they can achieve much more than what they have done and we can definitely achieve over the US 20 billion and in fact this year our target for the for exports was something like uh, 13 million but we will reach a 15 million uh, as per the provincial data that we have received and I think it is EDB's wish that we strengthen consortiums and associations and EDB can then take a step back and allow the private sector to drive themselves. Also speaking here, Chairman of the Lanka Rubber Global Consortium, Mohideen Kader, said export businesses should seek new ways to overcome challenges in the global market. In today's globally competitive environment, companies have to face a lot of challenges to sustain the marketplace. Companies come up with different strategies to mitigate these challenges and some companies fail in the long run due to their incapability and due to lack of resources. But forming an alliance and entering into the global marketplace will give many chances to win the battle and to help negate competitors. This venture has been initiated based on the necessity of collaborative to compete. And the Colombo Bose concluded activities on an optimistic note on Friday with the ASPI increasing 33.39 to close at 6,443.50, while the S&P SL20 index advanced 25.85 to end trading at 3,735.48. Market turnover reached 1.7 billion rupees, with foreign investors ending as net sellers of 62 million rupees. We have Demantha Matthew now from First Capital Holdings to Comment on the forecast for Colombo shares in the new week. The market was on a downtrend uh, last week despite the sudden upsurge that was witnessed on Friday. Foreign activity has been on the high side uh, these days with locals uh, waiting for the elections. However, towards the end of the week, uh, we saw some improvement in local activity which we think will flow on to the next week as well. Uh, there seems to be an improvement in uh, local investor confidence levels and we believe the high net worth activity levels are likely to improve. We are also confident that the foreign activity will continue strongly in the market while it is most likely to be mostly on the buy side. Thereby we expect market conditions to improve and the overall market to be adopt an uh, uptrend with higher biasness towards the blue chip counters. In international business news, leaders of 55 nations are negotiating a free trade deal to establish a continental free trade area that will cover more than 1.2 billion people across the African continent. According to a spokesperson for the African Union, this will see the launch of a free trade zone for goods and services before the end of 2018. The deal is designed to replace a patchwork of smaller trade agreements and bring countries closer together following the pattern set by the European Union. CFTA could eventually be extended to create common policies on investment, competition and intellectual property. It covers economies with a combined GDP of around 3.4 trillion US dollars. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Avadharana 24-7. Recremations have begun over the failure of the U.S. Senate to pass a new budget and prevent the shutdown of many federal services. A bill to fund the federal government for the coming weeks did not receive the required 60 votes, but the deadline on midnight on Friday. President Trump accused the Democrats of putting politics above the interests of the American people. Aides to President Donald Trump told reporters yesterday that he feels frustrated over the government shutdown and suggested it was secured by Democratic lawmakers to mark Trump's first anniversary in office. White House Budget Director Mick Mulwani spoke with reporters on the White House driveway hours after a joint press briefing on the first day of a government shutdown that coincided with the one-year mark of Trump's inauguration. 
Oh, President, yeah, fine. I talked to him right after the pressure. Yes, he's, he's frustrated because okay. this we, this is not what we should be talking about. And the Democrats got the shutdown that they wanted on his anniversary. But again, when you need 60 votes, they sort of, you know, dictate uh, what happens. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of protesters took to the streets of New York, Los Angeles, Washington and other major U.S. cities yesterday for the second Women's March, a multi-city mass rally hailed as the start of a new era of female political activism in a move to mark the first anniversary of President Donald Trump's inauguration. However, tourists were pleasantly surprised to gain access to museums and monuments in Washington, D.C., where back-to-back -back rallies and warmer temperatures ensured a steady stream of foot traffic on day one of the U.S. government shutdown. In the last government shutdown in 2013, popular tourist sites such as the Smithsonian was closed, with barricades going up at other sites. Here's a look at other stories making news from across the world. Afghan security forces say they have regained control of a luxury hotel in Kabul after it was stormed by gunmen. Gunmen burst into the Intercontinental Hotel last evening, shooting at guests and staff and detonating grenades, leaving at least five civilians killed and six injured. Pope Francis, speaking at a mass in the northern city of Trujillo in Peru, spoke on violence against women, saying it is a plague that needed to be combated across the region. According to the UN, half of the 25 countries with the largest number of murders of women are in Latin America. Brazil's southeastern state of Minas Gerais has declared a public health emergency following a deadly outbreak of yellow fever. At least 15 people have died there since December. Fifteen Syrian refugees, some of them children, have been found frozen to death while trying to cross the mountainous border into Lebanon. Thirteen bodies were found on Friday and two more were discovered yesterday after the area was hit by a fierce snowstorm. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. In sports, we start off with cricket. Sri Lanka bounced back after suffering two defeats to win against Zimbabwe by five wickets in Dhaka. Sri Lanka restricted Zimbabwe for 190 runs and emerged victorious after reaching their target in just 44.5 overs today. Deciding to bat first, Zimbabwe could not get off to the best of starts as they lost the top four for just 73 runs. Brendan Taylor and skipper Graham Kramer was the highest contributors for Zimbabwe as they scored 58 and 34 runs respectively, leading their team to a total of 198 runs. With a 199 victory target in hand, Sri Lanka got off to a slow start with opener Upul Taranga being departed for 17 runs, giving away his wicket to Tendai Chitara. Following Taranga's dismissal, Kusal Pereira together with Kusal Mendes stood steady on the crease, ensuring they do not lose early wickets putting up a partnership of 70 runs. Kusal Pereira unfortunately lost his wicket with one more run remaining for a half century. Mendes soon followed as he was bowled out by Muzarabani. Coming into bat, skipper Dinesh Chandima pairing up with Tisra Pereira shepherded the country towards victory. Be the end of it. A lusty blow to end it and look what that means to those two. It's been a long time coming. That changing room will feel very relieved. They finally broke. Taking you to the Australian Open, both former champions Novak Djokovic and defending champion Roger Federer had easy wins in their respective matches as they reached the fourth round of the tournament. Meanwhile, former champion Maria Sharpova was upset by Angelique Kerber 6-1, 6-3 in the third round of the tournament. Former champion Novak Djokovic overpowered Spaniard Albert Ramos Vinola 6-2, 6-3, 6-3 to reach the fourth round of the Australian Open yesterday. After holding serve to lead 2-1 in the second set, the 14th seed took a medical timeout due to a muscle strain, but is in the quarter-finals. Roger Federer eased into the fourth round of the Australian Open with a 6-2, 7-5, 6-4 win over Richard Gasquet yesterday. The 36-year-old defending champion reached the round four of the Melbourne Park tournament for the 16th time by shifting up gears to see off his French opponent in just under two hours on Rod Laver Arena. Germany's Angelique Kerber, the 2016 winner in Melbourne, delivered a solid performance to beat Maria Sharapova 6-1, 6-3 in the third round. Kerber, seeded 21st, needed a little more than an hour to see off the 2008 champion, breaking Sharapova's serve five times.
very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 17 and 29 degrees Celsius with the lowest temperatures yet again expected in the central hills. When looking at the map, we can expect some clear skies over most parts of the island. Tomorrow will be a sunny day for many districts including Jaffna, Waunia, Anuradhapura and Putlam. But Matara, Gaul and Hambantota in particular can expect some wet weather. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City Forecast. And that's all from the News Centre for tonight. But before we go, we'd like to take you to the black sand beach of Rengisfara on Iceland's south coast, located beside the small fishing village of Vik. The black sand beach is one of the most unique beaches in the world, created by lava flowing into the ocean, which cooled almost instantly as it touched the water. The beach stands out for its breathtaking view, incredible basalt, columns, lava formations and towering cliffs and caves. Thank you for joining us. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana, 24-7.